Um, welcome to my talk. Um, it's City, Space, and Longing. Um, I'm going to start with this image first. This is a print job that I used to go a lot um, when, I, when I attended Tyler School of Art. This was like my second home. Um, I've been there. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this is a print shop that I literally lived in for printing my images, um, especially etchings and acquittance. Um, I mainly practice etching and um, acquittance on copper plate because I just like fascinated by the process of carving the image and then printing through the press bed. Um, so this is a view of the print shop where ventilations and all the press bed are located at. Um, there are lots of chemicals, so smells are not like good. It's kind of dangerous to always be there, but I was just, you know, just couldn't help it to like stay there and make my image. And this is where I produce most of my work in recent years. And these are the copper plates. Um, um, they're huge, like 24 by 36 and to to introduce the process is literally you scrape the image on copper plate with sharp needles. Like you literally draw like on paper, but on copper plate. And then you put the ink and then you put in the acid and then you just, you know, like waited for a few minutes or 30 minutes, depending on how dark the image you want it to be. And then the area that you carve will be gonna get ink on it. And, you, and then you will get the image that you'll see on this right side. So you literally press it with the part where you carve and you get the image. So it's, it's really interesting process to have the image kind of different from drawing or painting. That's just like lots of process involved, but that's like why I decided to do this medium. And before introducing about my work, I wanna like show some photos of my um, places that I've been and why I got influenced by those places and why I wanted to work about those certain space. So this is image of Seoul, South Korea. Um, I, this is a time in Seoul when I was an undergrad. Um, it was in 2016 where I took, when I took this photo. Um, so Seoul is really old, like really, really historically old city. And it's like a maze and lots of old alleys and streets, lots of wires, lots of new and old buildings. Um, I was fascinated by just how new and old things can coexist one another in one city. So based on that, um, my observation, I started creating this image called my deconstruction with using etching. Um, I was, I wanted to depict that like a maze, like chaotic, intricate um, streets of the city that I was experiencing. So this was a series of the work. And it was like a maze that you, could, you couldn't really find um, an exit. It was just really um, intricate and kind of like maze that you can knock it out of. And street becomes like a buildings and building becomes a street. So that was kind of like my, um, like my main observation from that. And I started seeing more details on the buildings, like wires attached from the outside, windows and doors and gates, um, lots of weird stuff attached on the building. And I just trying to depict those, um, like create my own visual map of the city of the soul. And I thought the etching was really perfect medium for me to depict these images because etching was good to portray like line quality that, that like only etching can have compared to screen printing or painting or drawing. So that's why I chose the certain mediums to show this like my mind map. And also when I first like kind of looking through those like landscape cityscape, the first thing, of course, notice come up to me is a human. Um, we're like packed in the city and we're the one who's moving around and shaping the city. So I've been kind of focusing on the certain shape of the human, like profile of the human, and then how that can kind of transform into the streets or path and then how humans shape those streets and how those streets and alleys and structures form the human body, like influence on human body. 
And these are screen printing process. Um, along with etching, these are more for like color and layers aspects of um, screen printing. Um, I use adopted this medium to like specifically kind of layer and collage to image one another. So for this one, um, I was thinking how I could visualize the space with colors and layers. Um, colors and layers gave like different perspective on seeing the space for me because I've been always working on lines and I was not really thinking of color and this gave me more like in depth on how I could see the space with more layers and depth and things like that. For this one was a paper making and pulp painting. As a printmaker, um, paper is like really, really important factor. It's just like fascinating how papers are made with um, Kozo denims or cottons and having a good quality cotton paper is really important for printmakers so that you can print the image on like really nice, like thick paper. It's more like tactile, um, intimate experience compared to those like commercial factory made paper. So I was just like, um, as a printmaker, just like this was happy place for me to make paper. So how this were made is you literally grind um, kozo denim or cotton, and then you put it in the water. And then you put that pulps like from those kozo denim or cotton onto the frame, and then you put the mold and then you just press it. And that's how you make the paper. And you can also make a pulps by, um, well, by using different like watercolor, things like that. And then the right image is where um, we made in the studio lots of colors and then we put in certain molds and you'll get that image of the papers with the color. So this was the example of using the molds and pulp and I could cut out some cardboards and put it inside of the frame and then print the image. And this was the example of papers I made. Um, it's really simple white paper. It's really thick and heavy, um, has lots of nice decals and edges. Um, and you'll get some like a paper marks. So it was really important process for me to kind of learn about like history of papers and prints. So I took advantage of abstract features in, print in paper making and pulp painting, um, which was really like abstract and vague, but I could see my interpretation of space more like vaguely, but more like broad and way that I could simplify the space, not just using like delicate lines, but I could kind of see as more like negative and positive space and the relationship between those. Um, by draping like pulp like this, this, plate, this piece called conjunction, by draping the pulp, I could um, visualize the space and structure more freely and playing with geometric shape. And I didn't need to like restrain myself of all those like acid and printing process. And this, play, this piece also um, inside out, um, kind of more organic shape, um, not just making like vertical, horizontal, straight lines, but also kind of expanding to more organic shapes of space and how I observe and be more fun and playful. So it was a good break from controlled process and printmaking. This one, um, it was my time in Rome where I spent my one year in grad school. Um, Temple provided me with amazing opportunity to go to Rome to um, study um, printmaking especially. And this, just, this space is really a special thing. And also that one year of time period was really special to me because I learned a lot about new interesting space like this place especially called Piazza del Popolo, which means square for people. So all sorts of people, anonymous people pass by here every day since like, since when this city was built in Italy. Um, it was really historically um, like built up on lots of layers. Um, so I got influenced a lot by this certain space because I've never really seen this kind of square in my life in other cities like Korea or other American city, like cities in America other than Philly or New York City or Boston. It was more, um, the space was more for like people. So I could kind of observe city 
and space in more specific way. Um, so I was seeing more like passing by interaction and connecting all the direction because this specific piazza was connecting the north of Rome and the south of Rome. And um, this just connects to every directions of the city. So it's kind of like heart of the city. So it just makes me think of lots of movement and flow of the city. So based on the observation, I subtracted all these like fountains and other like trees and things. I just only think about this like flow and movements in the city and the parts where it's really dense, the other parts where it's like kind of spread out, um, things like that was really a um, fun process for me to kind of uh, like drew and then kind of process through. And also because I looked the space that square from aerial view and I was thinking of more like flight tracker um, from more aerial view of how I see the space. And I was thinking how, what if I collaged this drawing with this flight tracker image and the connection between this aerial view perspective. And this was um, other experiments with video and sculpture as um, I'm going to show the sculpture aspect in this next slide, but this was a video um, video piece that I've done. Um, I projected videos on white wall and put the miler and I did some ink drawing and I wanted to see those like contrasts between moving image of the video and also the still like a still life of like just like still image of the drawing. And this one, and this was a um, installation I put up. Um, I wanted to kind of, I was thinking of more conceive of the spaces as a nexus of random and fleeting meetings and a place where human life comes together and meeting. And in terms of material choice, I use lots of yarns and um, like clips and lots of like a stretchable like materials like shoelace and things like that um so is that, so good... uh, sorry to interrupt is that from a photo in um in rome yes photo in rome oh this one is actually the video but this one yeah i took it, the photo in rome yeah is that what you're asking yeah yeah and also yeah. i forgot to Earlier. If anyone has any questions, um, just feel free to put it in the chat or unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, the material choice. Um, I was always working with two dimensional uh, material, such as like pa on paper, working on paper. So it was kind of stretched for me to work with some three dimensional materials and um, go beyond the kind of constrained four corners of the paper. So I did not want to put down this installation. So I decided to um, add on those like paper making pieces I made because the theme was kind of connected kind of conjunctions and pathway. So I wanted to put this as like a mark in between of this uh, big spider web. So it was kind of um, strange experience because like colors with this thread was kind of like kind of new thing for me to see, but it was a good experience and like kind of learn about more space and color. And I did lots of sketches of Rome to help better observe the city and space. Um, I started to see the city as like a big spider web and I'm, I'm like a spider in this huge web that I'm like, like, like just like residing in. And I did lots of sketches like this um, just to better understand the city, but I don't think I will never understand every like about the city fully, but this was a really simple like learning process for me and learning about more architectures and history. Um, so this were this is the technique called monotype. Um, the monotype is literally drawing on acrylic sheets and you'll get some painterly effects with the printing. I practice a lot with charcoal drawing um, at the same time to kind of help myself, help my skill better in like paintings and drawings. Um, and at this time, my interest 
of the space kind of shifted from those piazza to cave, catacomb, and arches. Um, I wanted to kind of concentrate more on specific plays like that because there's so much history and layers in Rome, especially there's depths and layers in time and space, especially because I was in eternal city Rome where lots of histories and layers and things like that. And this is the image of Bath of Caracalla that I took. Um, I was just fascinated by this spot because I perceived lots of architectural layers within layers entangled with thousands and thousands of years, especially like human beings are, you know, dying and new lives come, but these architectures and trees like that, those things are still alive and they're like a proof of the history. So I wanted to kind of. Yeah, Lisa, um, mm -hmm. my mom and I went to uh, Rome, Italy several years ago and mm -hmm. it was amazing. Like, cause built like my family's in Florida. So they, like their city is like three buildings. Mm -hmm. um, they call it downtown. And then, um, you know, Philadelphia has some amazing architecture, mm -hmm. which right. is you know, hundreds of years old. Mm -hmm. But then when you go to Rome, it's just like, oh my goodness, the right. Coliseum and the, yes. the Vatican and, and the streets. And it's just like, Wow, it's 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 amazing to to feel like you're in something, you're in an area that's like thousands of years old, and so, mm -hmm. so many things have happened. There's probably so much energy right going on <laughs> at all times, and um, yeah, it was an amazing place. It's it's awesome you were able to mm -hmm. capture, you know, all this this beautiful inter interpretation of your art, you know, mm -hmm. while you were there. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> huh? Really nice to see the spaces again that were familiar to me. Oh, I didn't know that that you went to Temple Rome. Yes, yeah, I loved it there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, these pieces um kind of intertwine between time and space. Um, I chose monotype for this kind of death and layer work because monotype has so much possibility to um, convey those like layers by using just rollers and scrapers and brush, and you can just put the layers over and over and kind of kind of that kind of transform into time aspects. And this image is um, called Mausoleo delle Fosse Argentine. Um, this is actually a museum now, but actually used to um, be a tomb for the soldiers who fought against Nazi during World War II in Rome. So this is near a huge park, um, near Colosseum. And I was just fascinated by the structure itself and the architecture because it was half underground and half ground. Um, I was trying to portray those images with charcoal because charcoal has lots of depth and then like I can put lots of um, like a really subtle tonality with that. So I was working on with arches and then those like dark history and then like anterns, things like that. And this was a sketch to kind of imagine again of the space, like half undergrounds and half grounds and how the space can function. And I approach more into architectural um, perspective. So this was a Rome series of drawing, 12, 12 drawings of the series. Um, it was opportunity to discover more underground cave and catacomb as an in-depth layer space, like just beyond the ground, like this ground space that we're like walking. So it was just um, different perspective that I never really thought of, like undergrounds and cave and things like that. And this image um, was kind of an extension of that layers in time because this image shows lots of layers and layers up and from this rectangular shape of door and it leads to fountain and the fountain leads to arch shape entrance and that leads to like a square a more rectangular window door and then that shows like car and outside so it's just lots of interesting story that I can like like um, unfold up and then based on that image and some thoughts and writings I came up with this monotype called layers of mind um, I started seeing void as a layer not just like putting like arches and um, shapes of the frames over and over and kind of trying to like think more of positive and negative space and the relationship between 
how this void works in the piece. And this piece was just kind of opposite of the previous work. Um, it's just more work on density, like how the layers can dance over and over compared to the previous one, which has a void in the middle. This piece is line of cut. Um, I'm sure some of you guys um, experience this when you're in like middle school or elementary school. You just carve on the linoleum block and then you print it over. It's just really simple, really printmaking technique. Um, I use this technique just to kind of show that simple one line to depict the pathway that we human beings walk up on. This piece was made by from the carving piece, it was just simple one line, but kind of connecting my theme that I made in 2016 work, which is interesting because I thought my work has changed a lot, but I was actually thinking the same kind of imagery in my head, like back in my brain or something. So for these pieces called con continents, um, I was thinking how borders affect our path, um, how we walk and kind of divide the sections in the space. I was more thinking, um, I was like deeply thinking the negative and positive space and emphasize between these voids and where like the lands are. And I used a specific medium called aquatint. It's also used on copper plate um, as a medium to, sep um, to separate and divide the different tonalities. You put the raisin and then you put an acid and then you'll get that tones where you put the, res the raisin on. So it's really technical um, printmaking. Um, you will you see the, the black parts is where I put lots of raisin and then put an acid for a long time versus the lighter part, which I put like two or three minutes. So it's this really technical process involved, which is if you draw this, it will take less than five minutes. And this is um, it's also the Aquatine piece. Um, I was thinking more ephemeral space, that space utilized for both nothing and everything, kind of connected to those piazza that also can be used both everything and nothing. Um, and also kind of those like, divide division between one spot to the other. And kind of extend, kind of um, developing that idea from two dimensional to this three dimensional sculpture aspect. Um, this is a danced wire works that I wanted to see how it function as a single passage in the tangible space. Um, everything is entangled in this wire with like small like clay works and things like that. And it moves freely by creating its own small piazza in this piece. I like this type of that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It was actually um, made from one of my friends who wrote artist statement for me. We were like practicing and then that friend made that poetic like title for me. And I was like, oh wait, I wanna use that for my piece mm -hmm. in the future. So I saved that, yeah. <laughs> And this is a reference image of that previous sculpture. Um, there's some photographs of like people moving on cobblestones. And I intentionally put in like a stair, looks like a stair shape because it kind of makes you want to step on it and like go walk up on versus this wire sculptures are kind of still image is kind of, you know, not moving at all. So that gives like a contrast between moving and like kind of, you know, standing still. Um, so these are Philadelphia, you will notice. Um, so in 2020, um, last year, I started working on a project called Color of Urban Fabric with digital drawing. I used the Procreate app in iPad, which is really good tools to um, use the colors and paintbrush freely. So I wanted to depict my time in Philadelphia. Um, it was really interesting, old abandoned building from an old abandoned building to like a new, from this new, like really modern building. Um, the right one is a architecture of the children's hospital in West Philly. And the left one was in center city, which I really thought strange because the down part is like all the arches, like Colosseum imagery. And the upper parts are like avant-garde shapes. So it was like combined together in one building. I was really, fascinated by the shapes and the structure and how how much like interesting Philly like architecture the Philly has. So 
So using the Procreate, um, I was seeing more color aspects of the city, like using quick drawing to show an impression of vibrant and dynamic scene of our city that where we live in. And it was an everyday project that I did during quarantine to react from my city and also communicate with the city. And it was a good opportunity to learn about the color scheme of how I could compose different areas of the colors and also how I can adopt the white space actively in the space of this like a square format and arches. And kind of developing this idea of the color of the urban fabric, I kind of narrowed my view on this of the city into cactus called the cactus city. I started seeing the city as like a lots of city with lots of thorns, like a cactus, such as corner, dangerous um, construction materials, and all about like squares and rectangulars and angles and you know corners. And I was kind of um, focusing on that aspect of the city. And yeah, this view of Philly and, you know, how much buildings are like squeezing and packed one another. And from that observation and interpretation of the city, I started making some digital drawing of that cactus city, like all the angles and like kind of sharp edges that kind of looks like you can get, um, you can, they will like poke you up or something. And yeah, I portrayed and visualized those images with some a bit of colors, but more of that aspect of like angles. And streets and blocks, and also these this piece is more about like squeezed in um, how we compromise ourselves to live in the city and sacrificing all the space and like like nature that we need to kind of give up by living in the city. Um, thinking of those city as like a compromised space um kind of living block block by block to next to one another mm. and so with that idea i wanted to make a print with that so i made this line of cut piece so i carved in five different stages and then i took um prints like printed five different stages like separately and then um, the reason why I did this was to make a moving image of um, the cactus city, which is um, this. So this image was made by the Procreate to connect those five different stages of the line of cut prints. Um, for me, like moving image, using moving image into this specific image was like kind of great because um, how lives are added and added onto one another. That's like, you know, how life in the city goes by. Lots of things, new things are added, like, you know, things are gone and kind of moving image to portray that vibrant scene of the city. So for the next one, this is the last um, technical explanation that I wanna show you guys is calligraphy. Um, it's the texture-based printing um, it's a printing with collaging. So you use the flat materials on the press pad and you print over with the ink. So this piece um, I did last year, um, um, kind, of, kind of getting away from those like architectures and space, I kind of wanted to talk more about my identity as a Korean and react from those like current, you know, word, the pandemic. Um, so I collaged this paper called Hanji, is a Korean, Korean paper. These words are ancient Korean words. Like, I don't know what that means because it's ancient words, but it's just like really beautiful paper that I picked up in our supply store. And then I collaged with the mask that we are all wearing now. Um, I was thinking more of the function of the mask, like mask as a, you know, now we wear masks to protect ourselves from germs and disease, but you know, like, Masks are also used to protect like who you are, kind of like privacy. Some people wear that to like not show their face or things like that. For me, um, this piece was really, is really emotional because I was thinking of like what I experienced as an Asian in America when the pandemic happened in March, 2020, like lots of like violence and crime happened towards like Asian community. And it was like kind of mask, wearing mask is, you know, everyone wear masks, but just like, 
trying to protect like who I am, but also at the same time inside me, I want to like reveal who I am and I don't want to forget my own language. So I just, it's just like really emotional piece that was kind of really special to kind of process and it was kind of like healing and therapeutic piece for me. And these pieces it was, um, I was starting seeing mask as a tool to kind of compose space and structure again, because that's always where I'm going back to. So I kind of composed a mask and cut it and, and paste it and almost it looked like an island floating the ocean. And this is the last project. Um, I'm still working on it, um, called City as a Womb and Womb as a City. There, I found lots of visual and conceptual similarity between city and womb. It's like containing life in one constrained space. It's like a sanctuary, um, especially like arches. The shape of the arch kind of reminds me a lot of that womb, like a round shape, organic, like the curves, um, entrance to building, entrance to life, the very first place that we all like enter and reside in. So some of the digital imagery that I portrayed. So um, yeah, as with um, making this artist talk file, I concluded myself that I'm kind of person who got influenced a lot by the environment where I'm at, like physically, my physical location kind of influenced my work a lot. And these piece also portrayed the Philly and I want to keep exploring this theme city as a womb and womb as a city um, interesting conceptual similarity um, and I will not stop asking myself like how I can transform the space where I'm at now into visual language not just for not just like general visual language but how I can actively um, communicate with the public and how I can make them engage into my work. I think that's my um, kind of long-term goal as an artist. Um, that's what I kind of want to work on from now on. So yeah, thank you everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great video you made. I hopefully, you know, sometimes you don't get a chance to do that and except when you have a fire under your butt. So <laughs> Perhaps, you know, you could use this in the future. And now that we have it on YouTube, I mean, that's great. It's a beautiful presentation, Lisa. Thank you so really, much, Kim. It was, it was <laughs> awesome to see. These artists at lunch are, are so cool. I really, you know, we, we all re really enjoy them. Um, and it's just amazing to see how, how the saying, you know, art is in the eye of the beholder. It's just so, you know, so very true. Everybody mm -hmm. sees things so differently and it's just, it's amazing. And like to have a story behind your art and then also to put a, an extra bit of effort into your art as to mm -hmm. like making your own paper. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really, you know, really cool. I also am interested in doing that someday. I, I walked through a class one day and they were doing it. <laughs> oh, it's really cool. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like it also when people make their own pigments and it just seems like mm -hmm. it's a little bit, just one more step to make the story mm -hmm. a little bit more interesting and right. you know, so you can you know, feel the art that the artist is doing and the materials that they're using. And it's like really so much a part of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Great job, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> I learned all kinds of stuff about you and about your work and about how you think. And I, I took you literally that this was an artist's lunch because I had to eat my lunch. <laughs> 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 oh, that's okay. <laughs> Thank that's you, Lisa. Funny. That really helped me understand your work much better. Oh, Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, we love these artists' lunch. My name is Kim. I'm, I'm the director and you know we do this. We've been doing it for over a year now. And, it, and sometimes <clears throat> sometimes it feels like, oh, it's a little bit slow, but we're giving the art artists like a really cool opportunity to have like a really cool um, virtual portfolio also. And anybody can oh. go like, say they buy, you know, Lisa's art, Lisa will be our, our artist in uh, residence next month at the Cherry Street Pier Gallery number five. So that's really cool. Like during on the Jumbotron, um, Cherry Street Pier will be running this very video to people that come to the pier, which are thousands of people. During oh, the wow. Weekend. 
So she's going to be getting that, you know, amazing exposure, not just by the six of us that are here today, but by, you know, thousands of people during the month. And um, mm -hmm. we're, we're just so proud that we can have these artists at lunch and just to introduce people. And just like you said, Kathy, to see how, you know, how, how artists think it's, 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 you know, sometimes very strange and yeah. sometimes very, <laughs> very different than, than other people think. And, and that's what always amazes me with, with the children that we have here at the port side at age four, we see their style and it, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. Like I could pick out like a kid's art that, you know, was four years old. And, and when they turn 10, it's very similar. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's definitely right. progressed a huge amount, but the same colors, the same shapes. And throughout your presentation today, it was awesome to see your particular style. And it's, it's very beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Is there a way to access this online for yeah. other people? Yes. yes. Um, so our website is Portsideartcenter.org. Here, I will drop the link at you. Um, it's really hard to hear you for some reason. Oh, it's because we're sitting next to each other, so only one of us has the, the volume on. Oh, okay. So tell me the link again. I shut up. I shut up. Okay. What, what's the link? Um, so I am going to put it into the chat now. It's portsideartcenter.org. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Slash artists at lunch. So let okay. me find it and put in the link. And then I don't know if any of you are local um, or if Lisa's told you about her artist residency next month at Cherry Street Pier, but she will be having a um, an opening on first Friday um, on November 5th. So I hope you all can make it. Awesome. We are so excited to have you, Lisa. And like I Thank said, we you. haven't had any um, printmakers. So it, this is going to be like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just super excited. It's going to be different. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited too. So, <laughs> family, spread, spread that, that link around, around and, and the information, information about, about the, uh, you know, her being down the residence, the artists in residence this month. Yeah. And they have the marketplaces and all a lot of different opportunities for Lisa to sell her art down there too. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Oh right. yeah, and then the there's an artist market um the same night as uh on November fifth from four to nine, and there you go. I just uh put that. And then we have a uh, family art night and children and Saturday art. So you know, a lot of people, a lot of art people, a lot of people that really come into their art specifically specific interested in art. It's not just like oh they're coming there and like oh they have art here, but you know the people that come there are specifically going there for you know for a reason to you know see some really cool art. And appreciate the space, and um, I think Lisa's going to have a, a great um, creative time there um, as she creates her art. You know, in that environment. Are you making plans yet about what you want to work on? I mean, you know, obviously we don't have a press down there. Um, mm -hmm. We can't do like a well, etching or anything like that, but maybe like some monotypes. Yeah, well, I have a plan that I kind of planned out, like. The theme that I just told you guys, the city as a one woman oh, city. Muted. Yeah, I. Oh, you're muted, Lisa. Oh, um, I can hear her. I think I'm, I'm not muted. There. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have a plan what I want to work on. So yeah, I'm just going to start printing soon. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're so excited. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for joining us and thank you everyone for, uh, for coming. This was a great talk. Lisa. It was so great to learn more about you and your work and your process. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Lisa. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.